the last things that I wanted to make sure that we touched on were some criticisms of Bohmian mechanics. And you didn't really do this, but the way Bohmian mechanics is often presented it, by its proponents is to make it seem kind of like a a dream come true in that it's a, a realist deterministic theory of quantum mechanics in which at the expense maybe of adding some sort of mysterious kind of wave to our ontology, we get to preserve point particles. But I have the impression that this still remains a minority view among physicists and philosophers. And I mean, it it certainly must. Say again that criticism. What's the criticism? That we have to add a mysterious kind of waves to our ontology. Well, that's that. So yes, that you often read that. You often hear that said. I guess it's complete nonsense. You don't. That's exactly what you don't add, because that mystic. What you're calling what these critics call this mysterious kind of wave. That's just the wave function. The psi function, which is a central ingredient in all versions of quantum mechanics. That's not what's added by Bohm. What I have read, it's not so much that the wave itself is added, but that because the wave doesn't collapse, it's kind of just like a ghost wave that never stops. It just keeps going. And there there are ghost waves all over the place that are these potential places that uh, particles could have been. So there's a a ghost wave of me in, I don't know, Chicago right now, or many. Well, is that a mathematical objection or a metaphysical one? I think it's, I, I'm not even sure if it's an objection, but it just, it, if that, if I, assuming that I sort of represented this, I guess it is, <laughs> an objection or a qualm rather assuming i i represented this qualm faithfully it just is another thing that goes against our intuitive understanding of the world and it doesn't really seem but you see this this question is related to the deeper question that i raised before what is the status of the wave function granted it's a strange kind of thing it's a novel thing but this thing and let's say it involves ghost waves, there's a sense in which that's true in orthodox quantum theory too, right? Only mechanics doesn't get rid of the wave function. On the other hand, you might say, oh, but in orthodox quantum theory, the wave function collapses. In Bohmian mechanics, it's a theorem that the wave function of a system does collapse. You can prove that despite the fact that the Schrodinger's equation with no collapse is a fundamental equation or theory, you can still prove that the wave function of the system, that is your wave function, for example, does collapse. Uh, at the same time, let me ask it the following question. Suppose I, let's say, let's agree that Bohmian mechanics works. It yields all the quantum mechanical predictions. So this objection that is being raised by about ghost waves. It's not saying that theory doesn't work. It's just that you find it strange that there's these ghost waves. Okay. Suppose I take my theory, which involves ghost waves, and int- complicate Schrodinger's equation to make so that the wave function does collapse. They just make it more complicated. Then I won't have ghost waves anymore. Should I really prefer this more complicated theory? I don't think so. I wouldn't prefer it. I'll take the simpler mathematical theory. If it has features you don't like, but it's simpler that way, let's say that's a good argument for the for why we have the features you don't like. The simpler theory has those features. Don't complicate things to to, to satisfy your prejudices. Mm-hmm. No, I, I I'm totally in agreement with you over this point, but I would. I suppose that as long as a theory had these very unintuitive, for me at least, implications, I would be tempted to sort of always be holding out or searching for something even simpler that didn't have 
these. Exactly. It's natural to search for something simpler. But look at the sociological situation. People accepted something not just simpler, something far more complicated and far more incoherent. They didn't react this way. They accepted orthodox quantum theory which has far weirder features, far worse, because it's incoherent, totally ambiguous. But people didn't say, oh, we have to do better. They criticized Einstein for saying we have to do better. But by the way, this feature, this, this feature I agree with this objection about the ghost waves in the sense, in the following sense, I think one should ask why there should be a wave function in the theory. And I, and I think the answer to that, though much work has to be done, is that the wave function is really more should be thought of as a level on the level of the law of motion rather than as a new physical object. So it's not a ghost wave at all. It's not a new kind of thing, new kind of thing that we have in the world, a ghost wave. It's rather we have a, a, new, a kind of law which seems to suggest that there's these ghost waves, but it's just a certain kind of law of motion. Now, why we should have that law of motion is a fundamental question. Hmm. Well, then let me uh, pose this final question that I was getting toward, it, and that is just why do you think, given that Bohmian mechanics is so much less vague than the Copenhagen interpretation, it is realist, it is deterministic, what are some of the main reasons that it remains a minority view? Are they all sociological or are there good philosophical and physical objections? I'm not aware of any good, really good objections if you actually consider the alternative. The alternatives are, I think the main, I think the main, the main, for me, the main thing is that very hardly anybody understands the theory because they don't want to look into it because they already believe it can't really work. So why spend the time trying to understand something which you're sort of convinced to begin with can't really do the job? I think if people really understood how simple the theory is, it's much simpler than textbook quantum theory, how simple it is and how um, completely it explains all quantum phenomena and how well, it explains quantum randomness and all of the mysteries of quantum mechanics, collapse of the wave function, the fact that obtaining information destroys the, in a two-slit experiment destroys the interference pattern. It explains the fact why we think there's a fundamental role for measurement and observation in quantum mechanics. That becomes crystal clear in Bohmian mechanics. If people appreciated all that it, uh, the, the extent, the complete extent to which it explains the phenomenon of orthodox quantum theory and all of the textbook rules, it would be much more widely accepted. But you're not going to get people to have that appreciation unless they study the theory. And how are they going to, and, and they would have to be very lucky to, to end up in a situation where they're studying the theory because they're, most of their teachers are going to discourage them from studying it. Most of their colleagues will discourage them from studying it.